the React.js documentation for backend programmers. To include React.js in a simple HTML application, there are multiple ways. One of the ways is just to put two lines, script type React.js, script, script type JavaScript, and React DOM, two scripts that include React.js and React DOM.js. If we want to use, in additional, uh, the JS6, then we also include the text uh, bubble script which is also a JavaScript type, and we just include it. The bubble will translate the JS6 into uh, the actual HTML. In React, we have components. React is basically components for the HTML for the web world, so that we don't have to write this uh, long uh, HTML and uh, copy again HTML snippets, then we create components. In order to create a simple React component, we create a class of example, hello world, and then which extends the React component. J JavaScript code, class hello world extends React component. We can pass properties parameters into a React application by using the this.prop.name. So we create a component, we first include React.js, we then create a component, and then we can pass to it parameters from the parent. We can also have a state in the component. It's less recommended but after all we must have some state and um, we can initialize the state for each component and then manage it it's always best to be stateless but of course we need to be stateful at certain points uh, here we see also the import so this is the first stage importing the react as a script tag into an html page then creating the main component react.create element and then creating the main component, and then adding uh, components. Uh, with JS6, it would look a little different, more XML-y, but for JS6, we need to include the script type text bubble. Uh, JS6 is, looks like uh, XML inside JavaScript, okay? So we have a JavaScript snippet, but we want to write HTML. So we write HTML inside the JavaScript, which is an XML inside the JavaScript. This is JS6, JS XML. Uh, what is React.js? Okay, React.js is componentized. A view layer from the MVC. It's more reusable to create components for HTML. It manages a virtual DOM, which ultimately outputs HTML for us. Uh, why is it called React? Because it's React to state changes. Uh, React takes the philosophy of uh, functional uh, programming. It's usually using uh, stateless uh, components. Uh, prefer not to use state, but it's also possible to create a state. Uh, we can install React also in other ways in uh, with the NPM. This would give us some additional library. So as we said, we have the React component, we have the input props, and we output an HTML. React components, React props are uh, immutable uh, once they have been passed in. We use Redux in order to uh, manage the state. So the parent can provide here a function and we reference it and when we have an input change, we can call it. We can communicate in between components. We can have parent to child communication, a child to parent communication, and we can have a non-related components communication. A the easiest is from parent to child. We pass properties down to children components, and we just use these uh, uh, properties uh, that we passed from the parent to the child. The child to parent is we pass a function to the child to allow the child to call the function because we said it's immutable, so we call the click handler. Non-relational computer. Components, non-related components can also communicate one with another by subscribing and listening to uh, objects. So we said add event listener, some other objects, and then we use it. So we can have three-way communication, one parent-child, child-parent, and non-related, non-related. <laughs>
the result of a React component is spitting out some uh, HTML code. We can also nest components uh, one inside another. Okay, so, so a component can return other components. It's best to prefer dump components, meaning stateless components, and to use uh, to receive only properties and return a HTML or J6. Stateful components can update with a set stage, set state, where we initialize the state in the constructor, the constructor of the component of the class of the React component is the one that is initializing the state. We can have higher order components that receive one component. Okay, JavaScript code. Receive one component and returns another component with some uh, enrichment. <coughs> Forms and user input. User input will not have any direct influence or effect on the rendered input uh, unless we actually catch it and do the change. Okay, we need to actually handle it and do the change. For higher order component, we use it in order to add functionality or behavior to existing uh, <coughs> components. All the other components are pure JavaScript that accept one component as its argument and returns another component. So from component to another component. <laughs> For example, here we enhance it with logging. So we take the component and we add to the uh, mounting of the component a log line. And thus we get a log line on the output. <laughs> 